When, um, when you look at Springfield um, as a place to get something done, um, where does the two words Michael Madigan come in? Well, Michael Madigan's uh, uh, you know, thumbprint is on a, on a lot of things, um, bo both good and bad. Uh, you have to realize that the, one of the main jobs of the speaker is to say no. Uh, what we candidates see as we go out and campaign is people asking us for this, that, more for me, more for me, more for me all the time. Very few people have answers as to uh, how, how to uh, make, make things balance. Um, there's, there's been gridlock. I'd like to see more democratization of the General Assembly. Why do people soft pedal this guy so much? It blows my mind. I don't know if they they soft pedal. I'm I mean, I'm not soft pedaling him, uh, but he at the at the end of the day, Katie, everybody gets a vote for Speaker of the House. Nobody's twisting and nobody's holding a gun to anybody's head and say, you know, if I go down there or Robin goes down there, nobody's going to make us vote for Speaker. Well, God, I hope, uh, yeah, but you you and I both know from politics for a long time, uh, we haven't. Our state is close to 50th in many important areas, and Michael Madigan has been there the longest. And he's the guy who's, who made really bad, not good times with Blago, and Blago's out. And it always made me sort of like Blago because of who his enemies were. And there may be some truth in that coming out down the road a piece. Who knows? But most of us just go, what the heck? Why can't we get a budget that means something? Why can't we get anything out of Springfield? Well, Blagojevich uh, demagogued on the tax issue and never proposed a tax increase. Before that, we had 18 right. years of Republican governors with a, quote, Build Illinois, unquote, program that amounted to defunding Cook County and, and Chicago. So I think the dysfunction has been a, a bipartisan effort. Um, Democrats control every, uh, the, the Senate right now and every constitutional office. So I think to single out any one person is, uh, you know, unnecessary demon. Uh, Mike Madigan makes a convenient target, and uh, I could win in this district by just by going around and saying, I'm going to fight against Mike Madigan, I'm going to throw, but I, I don't think that's productive. Uh, uh, the odds are he's going to be the speaker when either Robin or I get down there. We're going to have to work with him, and I look forward to working with everybody in Springfield, regardless of the differences in ideology or approach to government. What a good answer. Really. Well, we got to get things done. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean... I feel, I feel corrected to over demonizing the guy. You um, have a good record as a green supporter, and a, a, the Green Illinois is one of your um, campaign slogans. Would you want to say anything about that? We have about three minutes left. Time to. Well, toss if you, around well, if you look uh, at issues. Our, if you look at our campaign logo, it's uh, out of a blue background, a greener Illinois. I think that environmental problems have been ignored for too long by government at every level, and that the problems we're facing really are emergencies. Uh, we, we've got watershed problems in Illinois that nobody's uh, really talking about other than uh, Deborah Shore is doing a good job, and we've got to confront those right now because we're uh, approaching negative uh, drawdown of Lake Michigan and some of the aquifers outside the, the uh, Cook County and the Six County area are, are in real trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fearful that we won't get the leadership we need at the federal level, and so it's extremely important that we have environmental champions in Springfield. Uh, Elaine Neckritz can't do it alone. Julie Hamos was a strong supporter of environmental causes, and right. so it's uh, critical that this district have somebody who will, who will make that a signature issue. And uh, if you look at our website, electjeffsmith.org, I think we've devoted uh, more thought, time, and energy to that than not only other candidates in this race, but any candidates you'll see for the General Assembly around the state. Well, I know that today and Monday night are the two nights that the local Democratic organization will be uh, deciding their endorsements. Um, for those of you who are members of that Democratic organization, it's at Pottawatomie Park all day today and Monday night. I think uh, your race is on Monday night, right? They've moved it to Monday They've night, They've moved correct. it to yeah. Monday because yeah. it's a long day. Yeah. Highly, you know, Jeff, you, you were around when we made... The 49th Ward, one of the more democratic organizations well, with fought, a small d. I fought here for reform for many years, Katie, you know, shoulder to shoulder with you. We were Full disclosure, Jeff and I worked together on many things political, including the Harold Washington re-election campaign. We, we co-chaired the 49th Ward. Of 87. Um, actually, you and Joe co-chaired the 49th Ward. I did that, that whole other thing. You got promoted. Um, but 
I, I'm really glad for um, people like you trying for office. Um, it's always a good sign that something is still breathing, and, and, uh, and it's a sign we all need to have. So take heart. Well, thank you. At, the, uh, at this point in the, sh in the campaign, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good try that you're doing. It's a really good try. Well, we only go around once, so you've got to contribute what you can, right? And I like your turbine on your uh, lapel there. It's a, it's a windmill here. It's mm -hmm. a, well, we want to we build windmills, not tilt at them. Yeah. All right. That's a great lead out. Let's hear it for Jeff Smith, candidate for District 18th District State Rep. Thanks, Katie. Thanks a lot.